to Wizards Weekend Reviews. I'm your host, Wizard Black Mage, and this is your first ever episode of Weekend Reviews. I was thinking to myself earlier, what game should I review for my first ever episode? And then I thought of a time, a better time, a simpler time, the 1990s, back when video games were good. Specifically 1994, back when Rare was making a name for itself, and what game did they use to make a name for themselves? Donkey Kong Country. That's right. This game holds a special place in my heart because it's one of the first games I ever played, and one of the games that got me into Nintendo in general. What can I say about this game? What can't I say about this game? Well, let's break it down. Number one, gameplay. This game's controls are tight. You have two characters, Donkey and Diddy. Donkey is he's heavier, he's a little slower and uh, sluggish. His jumps aren't as high, but he's a powerhouse. When you're going up against bigger bad guys, you would expect him to be able to knock down those big bad guys, and he does, every time. Whereas Diddy is smaller, he's faster, more agile, he can reach those hard-to-reach places and get over those difficult jumps. Um, but when he comes up against bigger bad guys, they just... It, there's no contest. There are um, a few different controls. You can roll, you can run, you can jump. You can th kill bad guys by rolling into them, jumping on top of them, throwing barrels at them. There are a lot of secrets in this game. And every level is just has so much to find. It's, it's amazing. It's a side-scroller that also has a discovery element to it. And that's just not something that you see in video games very often. And it's not even like... I don't feel ever like I'm just collecting something to collect something. You have your your KONGs that gives you a life. You collect 100 bananas, that gives you a life. You collect tokens, three of them, that gives you the ability to run around and collect smaller tokens to give you lives. And it feels important. It feels like you're doing something to benefit you not just to collect something and that is what makes part of this gameplay just so amazing because you could go through a level and not collect anything in the game other than giving you a weak percentage doesn't punish you for it but it rewards you in a satisfying way and that is why the gameplay to me is phenomenal number two the art. This game's art is amazing. The level development is incredible. Each stage feels unique to the last stage. I can't even comprehend how amazingly beautiful and detailed every level is. They're very short, but at the same time, they feel so real. The jungle gives me the feeling of a jungle. The forests are foresty. The aquatic stages make me feel like I'm swimming through a coral reef avoiding octopi and piranha. The snow levels are astounding. The brilliant use of the, the weather clearing up as you pass through the stage. The, the slick just amaze it's just amazing i just i can't even and then on top of it the ice cavern so much detail was put into the stage and although i didn't play a lot of it today i do believe that's the only stage with those graphics correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but i do believe that's the only stage with those graphics and it's it's just amazing how much detail they put into a five-minute section of this game. The the way that the, the light shimmers through the crystals, the, the, it's just, it's so simple, but so amazingly complex that I've never seen in a video game something so emotionally just, I've never had a game that has just taken me on a visual journey that is comparable to James Cameron's Avatar. 
and it was made in 1994 for five minutes of just one of the most incredible video games to ever exist. And it's stunning. It's beautiful. Number three, the music. If you thought the art was beautiful, you've got... there's nothing on the music. The music of this game is so incredible. It perfectly encapsulates any of the environments that it's in. When you're going through the jungle, you feel like you're going through the jungle. When you're going through the forest, it sounds like you're going through a forest. Aquatic ambience perfectly encapsulates the feeling of swimming through a water. The ice cave chant amazingly captures the sound of ice. If ice even had a sound, when you're on the snowy mountain and all you hear is just simple, quiet, you sound, it sounds like you're alone. You're alone on a mountain with nothing but vultures and snow and orangutans that throw barrels at you, and sometimes really big mouth crocodiles. And you feel... You feel it inside of you. This album, to me, is the greatest album that could ever exist. The soundtrack is so amazing. Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix, which I have said, not here, not captured until today. I have said that it is the greatest album to ever exist, but I was wrong. I was wrong. Because the soundtrack to Donkey Kong Country is the greatest. It's, it's music that you should listen to if you're having a bad day, because it will take you to another place. If you're having writer's block, listen to that soundtrack and you will go to the places that you're trying to write about. It is an incredible album. It is an incredible soundtrack. Finally, the boss fights. The boss fights in this game are pretty simple uh, and a little bit repetitive. You're stuck in a room with a bad animal. Uh, the first stage is a beaver and then a vulture and uh, I believe a B, and then a uh, can, and a vulture, and a beaver. Okay, so they're not very, they're not memorable fights. They're probably the least impressive part of this game, in my opinion. Um, seeing as two of them are the same, really. Uh, I don't know. They're okay. They're just alright. But there is one boss fight that stands out. The main boss fight. The main boss fight, for me, just pulls all of what is Donkey Kong Country together. You start on a boat, and in the background you see the, the stage. Donkey Kong's home. In the background, on the sea, and the music is so seafaring and piratey. It's beautiful. And then K. King? This bot boss fight, by far, is the hardest boss fight of the game. I've only ever beat it once, and it wasn't for this review, and I apologize for that, but let's go ahead and talk about it for a little bit. This boss fight has three stages. One in which K. Rool just throws his crown at you, you hit him on the head, and then you have to jump over him as he charges at you. The second, uh, similar, always the crown throwing, but then he jumps into the air and causes cannon fire on his own ship to try to kill Diddy and Donkey Kong. It, honestly, that method seems like the least logical. I don't... I don't know why anyone would fire at their own ship, but he is a crazy lizard. 
And then you beat him. The credits roll. You feel accomplished. But it's a false sense of accomplishment. Something doesn't seem quite right. The credits are all about the Kremlings. That's not right. And then it tricks you. K. Rool rises again for another standoff. And this is where I always lose. This is literally the hardest part of the game. I have traversed this vast realm, firing barrels through gigantic bees. I jumped on large mouth lizards. I fought orangutans that threw barrels at me for some reason. There were giant commando lizards that I fought. I fought a giant beaver. I fought a giant vulture. I fought a giant bigger bee, like a bigger bee. like. The small big bees were nothing in comparison to the big bee. I fought an anthropomorphic toxic barrel. But when it came to the king, the criminals, I couldn't beat him. And I know there's a trick to it, and I've done it before. I've beat this game before, I swear. I swear I've beat this game before, but I don't have any physical, physical proof. That, that boss battle is so difficult. Because if you lose Diddy, and this might just be me, and maybe someone's beat it with Donkey, and if you have, congratulations. But if you lose Diddy, then you lose your ability to avoid K. Rule. He, he changes up his strategy. Uh, for the third one, he throws his crown like normal, you smack him on the head, and then he does small jumps. And you have to roll under him. As far as I know, rolling under him is the best method. But he always started to just jump onto Diddy for me, and I couldn't get past it. It seemed kind of cheap, but because I've beat this game before, I know that it can be done, so it must have just been me. So I didn't get to see the credits roll for real. And that's disappointing. But it says more about me than it does this game, and that's why I give the bosses just an okay. Just an okay for me. With everything considered, the gameplay, the art, the music, and even those boss battles, I still consider Donkey Kong Country one of the greatest games that I have ever played and possibly to ever exist, and so I have to give it an 8 out of 10. Those boss battles are unforgiving, but the rest of the game is so beautiful. It's so amazing. It's so emotionally tied to who I am. I couldn't give it less than eight. Did you agree with my game review? Tell me about it in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe. Also, check out my other gaming show, Game Bros, where I play video games with my friends Alex and Angie.